Hi, I'm Kat Zakreski, and I'm here with John McAfee today. John, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me. So you've recently announced that you're running for president. Can yes. you tell me a little bit about what your platform will be? Well, uh, our, our slogan is uh, privacy, um, freedom, and technology. And uh, you know, we believe that uh, we've lost privacy here in America. Uh, from a technological standpoint, I think that's where America uh, has its greatest risks. Uh, we, we are in a cyber war with China now, whether we want to admit it or not. They have made off with over 14 million records of um, United States government employees, including people with top, top secret security clearances. That is, our embedded agents in foreign governments. I mean, no greater coup in, in any war has ever been achieved than what the Chinese just achieved. And, and our government is just sort of, you know, shrugging it off. Oh, well. And, uh, John, you just created a new political party, the Cyber Party. Tell yes. me a little bit about that. Well, again, we believe that the, the, our government is, is technologically illiterate. Uh, and people are running for president who claim not to have ever sent an email that think that wiping a disk means getting a damp cloth and, and wiping your computer. Um, and we're living in a cyber age where the next war is not going to be waged with bombs and bullets. It's going to be a cyber war where we wake up one morning and our electricity is gone because they've shut down all of the electricity uh, switching uh, devices. Uh, airplanes are going to be falling out of the sky because they've hacked into their control systems and put them all in a stall. Uh, our automobiles are going to be running off the, off the freeways. It's going to be chaos. All of our money will, will disappear and all of our, our records will be jumbled. But John, no candidate has ever won representing a third party. Why do you think you can with cyber? Well, I mean, statistically, then I'm, I, I, it's a perfect chance for me. It's like someone said, well, no, there hasn't been an American president with a, with a beard for 100 years ago. God, that's great. It's kind of like, okay, so you're playing roulette and black has come up 25 times in a row. Well, red will have to come up eventually. So who cares? It, it doesn't matter whether the, the no third party candidate has won before. Do you want a two party system to go in, per, in perpetuity in this country? Look at the mess that is created. They're machines. Uh, they have created the politics which created the mess in this country. So it has to stop. Why can't it stop this year? So, John, even if you were able to overcome the challenges that face a third party candidate, there's a lot of concern that you're not a serious candidate. Why are you a more serious candidate than, say, Donald Trump? Yeah, I, I don't know where the non-seriousness comes from because um, I have never done anything, anything, whether it's start a business or, or what have you, without knowing I was going to succeed. Uh, and for a year and a half, my, my advisors, my friends, my, my fans have been urging me to run for president. I only agreed when I realized, okay, I know how to win. Uh, and I will win this. I, I, I'm 70 years old. I can't waste a year of my life campaigning for nothing. So seriousness, absolutely. As to my life, they think, you know, my life is not serious. I don't know anybody with a more serious life. Um, I mean, I, I don't know any other candidate who has hid in the jungles of Central America while, while an entire army was, was searching for them. Uh, I don't know anybody who spent uh, weeks in a Guatemalan jail sleeping on a concrete floor. I mean, I don't know, it sounds serious to me. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about that, John. What can you tell us about what happened in Belize? Well, what happened in Belize is I, I was just foolish. I, I, I thought I had retired there. I have invested a, a, a huge amount of money. Uh, when the government uh, came to me and asked for a $2 million donation, I politely declined it. Um, a week later, 42 armed soldiers stormed my property, shot my dog in front of my eyes, uh, you know, more or less tortured me, destroyed a half million dollars worth of my property, and then left. The following morning, that same political person came and said, oh my God, what a terrible mistake, we're so sorry. It was a huge mistake. You know, they, they were looking for someone else, and I don't know where they got the information, I'm so sorry, have you reconsidered your donation? And I said, get the F off of my property. Uh, that began a war with Belize, which, uh, which uh, ended up with me uh, on the run. So I should have been a smart person and written him a check for $2 million and said thank you. I just didn't do that. But because you went on the run, there's some questions you know, among American voters about whether or not they can trust you with such a record. I mean, what do you say to those voters? Okay, the, the, the police government never charged me with anything. He wanted to question me. You have to understand that in third world countries, especially Central America, Banana Republic, that involves uh, terrible questioning, like swinging you up by your heels, putting a football helmet on your head and beating it until your brains turn to mush. That's not the type of questioning I wish to undergo. Now, maybe you would, maybe other Americans said, well, you should have gone ahead and, and, and endured that. I don't think so. I chose not to do it. And I've offered to, I've offered 
to meet them on any neutral country, including here in America, to answer any question that they have. They have declined. They don't want to ask questions. They want to punish me for embarrassing the government. So, so that was that. But, but that's, that's really not what I'm here to talk about. I, I, don't, I think the American public is smart enough to understand that, that things happen to people. You know, if you go out and you're outside the box and you, you explore and you're trying to find out what life is all about, you're going to step in holes and you're going to find bees nests. What about more recently with the DUI that occurred in August? Uh, again, it was a DUI. I had, I had just uh, uh, obtained a subscription, a subscription uh, um, uh, for uh, Xanax, a prescription. Uh, I had just gotten it that day. I've got all the doctor's proofs and things. Uh, I don't do well on Xanax, okay? I'd taken it two hours before I was stopped. And it, it was, again, I was impaired, I admit that. Uh, in Tennessee, however, if, if it's a legal prescription, uh, if there's no uh, warning on the label saying don't drive, I had had no alcohol in my blood, um, you know, it will, it will simply be dismissed. It was bad judgment. But then who has not had bad judgment? Um, so, again, these are things that, you know, we, we live in a country where if, if we're looking for a squeaky clean candidate, someone who's never done anything or been anywhere, uh, who's, who's never experienced some, some troubles, then that, that's fine. I'm not sure that that's what we want because that's what we've been electing for for a hundred years. So, John, you talked about you know a couple instances, particularly the DUI. You just said you had bad judgment in that case. How you would you um, show voters that you would have good judgment as president? Well, I mean, like in, in 70 years, to have a couple of bad judgments is not that bad. I think, uh, you know, I mean, you might end up having bad judgment by inviting me on here. You don't know. We never know until the until the end product. Um, but of course, I mean, who who does not? Uh, have bad judgment from time to time. My good judgment is, is very apparent. You know, when I chose to create uh, McAfee, the antivirus company, we were the first business in, in securing computers from viruses. Uh, that judgment worked out pretty well. The company's valued at $8 billion, was acquired by Intel. Uh, every company that I has fo have formed has been a success. Again, I don't do things to fail, I do things to succeed. That requires really good judgment. And so, John, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your electronic campaign. Yes. Uh, so I know you've been walking around Startup Alley today. What kind of companies have you met and which well, have stuck out, out to you? I, I'd like to talk about a couple of them. One is called uh, FireTalk, which, um, which we're, we just cut a deal. We, we're, we're going into partnership where I'm going to be using FireTalk uh, for my fireside chats because once a week I'll be going on, uh, on the air on the Internet with the American public and I'll be talking. I want to throw out crazy ideas. I mean, and maybe they're not so crazy, like um, what if we disbanded the TSA? That might be the first thing I'll throw out there. And then people write back and go, well, that's crazy because who's going to secure us and so on. And we'll talk it through. We can do that because we have software that will parse all of the incoming communication. Parsing means taking it apart and finding out what are they really saying here. And you might find out that 10,000 people have asked the same question but in different ways. Well, then our software will go, ah, this is what they're really asking and I will answer that question. And then they'll throw out another, and I'll answer these questions. So we will work through jointly, the entire American public and me, our platform, and how we will solve these issues. So nobody can do that. I mean, no one has done that. Uh, I have the technical competence to slap that together in very short order. It's not that complex for me. I can do it in my sleep. The other candidates do not have that capacity. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show today, John. Thank we really you. appreciate you coming to TechCrunch. All right, very Thanks. welcome.